اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان اللعین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین باری الخلائق اجمعین باعث الانبیاء والمرسلین والحمدللہ اللذی لا یبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يحصي نعماءه العادون ولا يودي حقه المجتهدون الذي لا يدركه بعد الهمم ولا يناله غوص الفطن الذي ليس لصفته حد محدود ولا نعت موجود ولا وقت معدود ولا أجل ممدود فطر الخلائق بقدرته ونشر الرياح برحمته ووتد بالسخور ميدان أرضه ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين حبيب الله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين ولعنة الله على عدائهم أجمعين من يوم عداوتهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الحكيم وهو أصدق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاتهم I begin in the name of Allah, the most kind, the most merciful. It's due to that kindness and mercy that we have these opportunities where we gather in remembrance and glorification of Him, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. We then begin this sermon the way the commander of the faithful used to begin many of his by advising us, Usikum ibadallah bi taqwallah. That I advise you, O the servants of God, to be God conscious, God fearing, and pious human beings. In these sermons of Shahru Ramadan, we have been discussing portions uh, of Dua Iftitah, the Dua that we recite every night, just so that we can get a deeper understanding of what we are reciting. We looked at two lessons the previous two weeks. The first week we talked about the importance of praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why it is known as Dua Iftitah, because it begins... Uh, with the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the importance of that. The second we talked about is the balance between hope and fear and how a believer needs to be uh, having that balance. Today we look at another lesson from this dua which I find very beautiful, you know. And that is that how fortunate we are that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to supplicate to Him. Yeah? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to make dua to Him. You know, we take this granted but this dua says very beautifully, you know, so we say in it, Allahumma azinta li fi duaika wa mas'alatik. That, O oh Allah, you have given me permission to pray to you and to ask from you. Fasma'a ya sami'u midhati wa ajib ya rahimu da'wati. So please answer and listen to my call and answer my prayers. You know, it is one of the greatest blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, that He gives us the ability to call Him. To call Him when we want to call Him, to call Him how often we want to call Him, and to call Him sometimes in a manner that we wouldn't even speak to each other in. We call and demand from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet God does not take any of these things offensively. Yeah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fact that He gives me this ability is something that we can't take for granted. You know? uh, we say our fourth Imam as Sajjad alayhi afdalu salatu wa salam. Ma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. In the munajat of the zakirin, of the rememberers, He says, Wa min a'adha min ni'am. One of the greatest blessings, one of the greatest ni'am. 
alayna that you have provided for us jarayana dhikrika ala alsinatina the fact that your dhikr comes onto our tongues wa iznuka lana biduaik and the fact that you have given us permission to call upon you one of the greatest blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for us you know i think it's something that we really have to understand right we really have to focus on there are numerous ways of understanding and grasping this right you know when someone is a normal human being or a normal person we can reach out to them there are no roadblocks but the more important a person becomes the more roadblocks are created to reaching that person right you can't just call the prime minister can you you can barely get to your mp's office yeah but you can call the resident alim any time you want you know but the more higher you move up the more difficult it gets there is no one higher than god yet there are no roadblocks to call allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah this is one of the beautiful things to keep in mind secondly no one is this available yeah no one is this available you can call your best friend five times a day you can call your mother five times a day the sixth time she'll be like baba enough now right we've spoken enough but not allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we can call allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any time and there will be no hesitation and god will always answer for us for that we need to be appreciative of how open allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is we need to have hope you know the the calling of god creates hope within us if we didn't have the ability to call allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it would render us in many instances feeling shallow hopeless without any guidance but the fact that i can call to him and feel secure that he hears my voices that he hears my duas he hears my supplications in itself is adds hope into our lives and when you look at all of these things right the fact that he's there is no limitations to calling him the fact that there are no intermediaries needed to call him the fact that it adds hope all of these things become even more remarkable from the fact that in many instances i am negligent in my responsibilities to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks me to pray but i'll say you know what i'll pray a little bit later Yeah Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala asks me to keep a beard I'll say you know what I'll pick and choose if I keep a beard Allah asks me to wear a hijab I say I'll pick and choose what I the way I am negligent to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala it is surprising that he still answers our calls when he does isn't it yeah imagine if you had a friend <coughs> even a loved one that you did everything for that person they called you you were there you nurtured them you took care of them and the day when you needed them they weren't there to help you yeah, imagine i want you to just imagine that would you ever help that person the same way again no you would never forget that yeah that when i needed you you weren't there for me when i had done everything for you imagine how great god is then yeah imagine how great god is that the fact that we take our commitment to him for granted we pick and choose what we want to commit to yet when i turn to him he doesn't say remember but you did this no allah says i'm here what do you need my servant yeah and this is the point that we mention in dua iftita it's too beautiful too beautiful we say ya rabbi innaka tad'uni fawaliyan yeah that oh allah you call me but i turn away from you Yeah? and then we say wa tatahabbu ilayya fa tabaghadu ilayk you show affection to me but i just show hatred back to you o oh allah as if i don't care about you we look at our lives yeah and none of us can say oh i don't do these things we all have degrees of this yeah the fact that we do not respond to god the way he deserves to be responded to and then we say وَتَتَوَدَّدُ إِلَيَّ فَلَا أَقْبَلُ مِنْكَ That you call me towards you, you display affection towards me, but I do not respond. كَأَنَّ لِي أَتَتَوَّلَ عَلَيْكَ As if I am better than you, O oh Allah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. You know, this is not what we think, yeah? But this is what our actions tell us. Yeah? That when God says, I want you to do this, and then I say, you know what, I'm going to pick and choose when I do it and how I do it, 
it is as if I am telling God, I am more godly than you. Yeah? I will decide on these things. You know, sometimes, like I always say, that it's not what we say, but it's the translation of what we say that is important. Right? Like, you know, we, we do this with our spouses and our family all the time, right? We'll make a very smart comment. Be like, you know, that's not what I meant, but everybody knows what you meant. Yeah? Everybody knows exactly what the words you intended. It's the meaning behind it. Our actions and our display to God is not with what we say. God looks at the intent behind it. That when I say I'm going to do this, even though God says I don't want you to do this, I am telling God I am more deserving of worship than you are, O oh Allah. And this is a problem, right? And we say in this dua that even though I do these things, I turn away from you, I act arrogantly, I, I don't respond to you. فَلَمْ يَمْنَعَكَ ذَلِكَ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ لِي وَالْإِحْسَانِ إِلَيَّ That that still does not stop you from being merciful and kind to me, O oh Allah. God is beautiful, my brothers and sisters. Yeah? The beauty of God cannot be comprehended, cannot be limited. Whatever we go through in our lives, it's not God's fault. Yeah? It's not God's problem. It's not that God doesn't like me. It's not that God doesn't love me. No. God's love cannot be encapsulated. God's kindness cannot be encaps encapsulated. It's we who have turned from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, one of the main responsibilities that we have is that we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows constant kindness to us. What He expects back from us is to answer His call. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي anni." We know this, right? That when my servants ask you about me, God says, tell them I am Qareeb, close. Ujibu da'wata da'i iza da'an. That I answer the caller when he calls me. But then what? Fal yastajibu li. But answer my call, God says. Yeah, answer my call as well. Right? And so that is the primary responsibility that we have To answer the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And inshallah if we do that We will develop this relationship with God And when we develop this relationship with God Then at the end of it One of the main outcomes that we draw Is not the answering of my dua But it's an understanding that God never leaves me yeah? That God whatever He decides to do for me is what's important for me and what's needed for me. So even if I make a dua and that dua is not answered, because my relationship with God has become so solidified, it doesn't hurt me. I am not in distress that my dua has not been answered because I know that the one that I have called to knows me best and knows my condition the best. You understand? Yeah? We recite this in this dua as well. We say, فَإِنْ أَبْطَى anni." I tub to be jahli I like. Yeah. He says that when you resp when your response is delayed, I blame you out of my ignorance. This dua I tell you is one of the best duas I've ever read. Yeah, they're all beautiful duas from our imams. But this one resonates with me more than anything. Because it's like the Imam knows me and then made a dua for me. And we all fit that boat. Yeah. That when our dua is late, it's not answered, out of our ignorance, we blame God. Yeah, but then we say, But this delay in response, it could be we say that this delay in response is better for me out of your knowledge of everything that will happen. Yeah? When we make dua, it's not about getting something right back from Allah. It's about developing a relationship with God. And when we can develop a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that will help us in dealing with all of these emotions that we get and get this comfort that whatever God does for me is good. Inshallah, we remember these on these nights of Qadr, inshallah, that we all pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the most important thing we need to be praying for is the connection that never fades with God, inshaAllah. Wa akhiru da'wan an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. Lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad. Sadaqallahu al-aliyyul azim.
اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان اللعین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والحمد للہ قاسم الجبارین مبیر الظالمین مدرک الحاربین نکال الظالمین سریخ المستصرخین موضع حاجات الطالبین معتمد المؤمنین اللہم صلی علی خاتم النبیین و سید المرسلین محمد ما صلی علی محمد و آل محمد و صلی علی سید الوصیین امیر المؤمنین علی ابن ابی طالب علیہ السلام صلی علی محمد و آل محمد و صلی علی صدیقة الطاہرة فاطمة الزہرة سیدتی نساء العالمین صلی علی محمد و آل محمد و صلی علی سبت الرحمة و امامی الہدى الحسن والحسین سید شباب اہل الجنة اللہم صلی علی محمد و آل محمد و صلی علی علی ابن الحسین و محمد ابن علی و جعفر ابن محمد و موسیٰ ابن جعفر و علی ابن موسیٰ و محمد ابن علی و علی ابن محمد و الحسن ابن علی و الحجت القائم المہدی صلی علی محمد و آل محمد صلاة لا غاية لعددها ولا نهاية لمددها ولا نفاد لأمدها اللہم اغفر للمؤمنین والمؤمنات والمسلمین والمسلمات الاحیاء منهم والاموات وتابع بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد We begin by first and foremost sending condolences to our living Imam and to each and every one of you as these are the nights in which we remember the istishhad anniversary of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhima afdalu salatu wa salam Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the opportunity insha'Allah to go for his ziyarat to Najaf and that we receive his shafaat in the hereafter insha'Allah We also want to remember the, the tragedy again that took place to our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan this week. Uh, two different bombs uh, in two different locations on two different days, one at a school and one at a mosque. SubhanAllah, right? Like the places where you would expect safety, right? Where you would expect to be protected, um, but innocent lives, close to 20 people were killed in these bomb blasts and um, close to, I think, 60 or 80 injured in these over 30 critical and so our prayers go out to our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan you know it is something that um, we mention all the time and I hope to God that the pain from these incidents never lessens in our hearts I hope it doesn't right because the moment the pain of these tragedies becomes just news to us um, I think that that doesn't bode well for our hearts at that particular moment. Yeah, our hearts would need some more purity to have to, have to be able to absorb it. And so, like I had mentioned yesterday in the majlis that we had, you know that, like this, like you know, it hurts when you hear these type of things because, like you know, no matter how bad my day is, I know that I'll come to mosque and I'll get iftar. You know, I won't have to worry about going to the hospital. I won't have to worry about where will I get my food. But these brothers and sisters and many around the world don't have that luxury. And so while we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the same time our prayers go out. And if there's anything we can do, whether it be donations or prayers, then it is our duty to try and assist in any way that we can. Let us remember the shuhada and all of their families and all those who are ill throughout the world with al-Fatiha. شیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین کی یوم الدین ایاک نعبد و ایاک نستعین اہدنا السراط المستقیم تعالیہم خیر We are also now embarking on the nights of Qadr and so I wanted to spend just a few minutes preparing us 
um, for these great nights. We already passed the 19th night. Tonight, inshallah, will be the 21st night. And then on Sunday night is the really the apex of this entire month of Shahrul Ramadan, and that is the 23rd night of Shahrul Ramadan. This is the night that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, when he very beautifully, he asks us, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدَرِ What do you th- think you understand about the night of Qadr? He says, لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ الشَّهَرِ That it's better than a thousand months. You know, I think sometimes like we take these things for granted, yeah? We've been listening to that verse since we were babies, right? And so a thousand months, okay. Man, that's cool, yeah? That one night can be better than a lifetime, right? And it's not just that one night can be better than a lifetime, it's that one night can make a life, yeah? Can make a life. Um, And it's not just this life. This one night can create a destiny for us all the way till Jannah, which will be eternity if we put the right efforts into this night. Yeah? So it's a very powerful night. This is why sometimes they translate it as a night of power, but it's not really the best translation, but it makes sense. Because of the power of that night that can make our destiny in dunya and akhirah, um, it is very beautiful. And so I think with most of things that are so beautiful and so weighty, we have to prepare. You know, and so that's why I wanted to talk about this, giving us time to prepare for Sunday night. Um, one of the things is, you know, we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ma'rifah of that night. Because I think it's hidden from us. I don't think we have full grasp of its value and its importance. And the more we do something, I think it becomes more habitual. But we need that ma'rifah. And so we ask God, because only He can provide that ma'rifah to us. And we ask Him for the ability to worship Him effectively on that night. You know, it comes from Him. So we need to have that intention. We need to prepare ahead. Make sure you're well rested. You know, the thing is that by the time the 23rd of night of Ramadan comes out, we've had many late nights already. And we've had many days of not good sleep. And so we don't have that ability to worship Him with that full mental alertness. You know, um, try and get rest on that day. It's a Sunday, alhamdulillah, you know. Um, and so we can rest on that day. Make sure you have the right clothes on, right fragrance on. Um, make sure you put some money aside for sadaqa. Make sure that you also have some amal besides what we will do at mosque that you do privately to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just, it could be a small dhikr of tasbih, you know, like you can just do 100 times, pick a dhikr. It doesn't have to be. I think when it comes to our connection to God on this night, it's not really at all about quantity. Yeah? It's about the quality of what we do on this night. Okay? So one thing, I, I, I really like that we worship God together. I think there's power in that. right? But have one thing you do, and it doesn't have to be extensive. It could be a simple dhikr. But do something that you're ready for. Make a list of people to pray for, because on that night we get all flustered. Yeah? Be prepared. So I guess all of that just tells us we need to prepare. Yeah? We need to prepare as best as we can. Um, on that night as well, spend some time in confessional to God, right? Our religion is very beautiful. You know, we don't have the same concept that our Christian or Catholic brothers, sisters do where there's a confessional, you know, where you go and confess to the priest. Thank God we don't have that, yeah? Um, but we confess to God, yeah? We confess to God. Spend some time confessing to God. Confess to Him your weakness. Confess to Him your worries. Confess to Him your mistakes and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful spend some time in reflection yeah where we want to go learn something new on that night it's not just all about dhikr and worship and these type of things but even knowledge is is ibadat yeah so if you can gain some knowledge about Allah start something new on this night many things we can do Right? Start something new if you have the ability on this night. And I'll tell you a personal story. You know that I, I shared this with the Fajr group eight years ago. I, I was telling people, start something new on this night, you know? And so eight years ago, I started something. I started a project, and then I said, you know what? We've always been told, start something on this night. And I started it, and subhanAllah, for seven years, I never went back to it. So I was like, man, is this true or not true, right? And then COVID hit. And I had free time and I finished this project and it's amazing that I finished that project exactly on the 23rd night of Ramadan again. Yeah? 
Eight years later, I didn't even think I would get back to it. This is not something is a joke. You want to start a business, put a plan on the 23rd night of Ramadan. You want to become a better person, start it on the 23rd night of Ramadan. You want to be more generous, start it on the 23rd night of Ramadan. This is the new year for us. And so this is where we start this and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will see it through inshallah. And lastly, if you, I don't want to stress you out, but try to make sure you pray Salatul Layl on that night. Yeah, um, on the 23rd day before the Amal on Sunday, inshallah the lecture that I'll be giving is about Salatul Layl and the importance of it. But if you can pray Salatul Layl that night, these are just some of the 10 things we can try to do. But let's not take it for granted. Pray for each other, pray for our Imams and inshallah we will have a tremendous journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa akhiru da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العلي العظيم